So, um, I'll be completely honest, I've never done this presentation before because I spend most of my time um, presenting to social workers because I've still got a day job as well as just filling many different plates. Um, but I'm here today to talk to you about direction. So, it's not something I've ever presented on and I thought, right, what do I do here? So, actually, at its most fundamental level, direction is actually just about the flow of energy and where we direct our attention. And as humans, we're all just energetic beings, whether we realise it or not. And every night, we spend a third of our life recharging. And it's a little bit like charging your mobile phone. Now, if you've got good, supportive habits in your life, you'll be looking for you wake up on around 70% battery every day. And then each day, we're faced with a multitude of decisions. And every decision is a little bit like kind of you know, an app on your phone, making a call or a text. Now, when we become overloaded at any point throughout the day, be that too many emails in your inbox, or you've eaten the wrong kind of food, or too much, or you haven't eaten enough, our brains kind of shut down a little bit, and we fall back on all of our existing behavior patterns that are stored in our subconscious mind. Now, that is great if you're healthy. I'm relatively healthy now, I'll be honest. So, if you fall back on things such as, you know, a little bit of meditation, or exercise, or a nice green juice, then that's fantastic. However, most of us, oh dear, I skipped a slide, dear me. Most of us fall back on these three things here. So social media, the average person checks their phone 12 times an hour. Um, a glass of wine that leads to a bottle, and then you wake up with a stinking hangover the next day, or a little bit of a snack and a coffee. Don't even get me started on coffee and how that impacts our body. Now, all of these unhealthy habits, they trigger part of the daily doors, and I apologise for the slides, but for some reason they just didn't go through. <laughs> you see that? Um, but the, d the D in the doors element, which is all we ever need actually every single day, is dopamine. Now the thing with dopamine is it's actually synonymous with pleasure. It's a very powerful neurotransmitter, and every single time we get a notification on our mobile phones, it releases a little shot of dopamine, so it gets us hooked. Silicon Valley know about this, and that's why we are all the kids on mobile phones, so I think next time you go mad at your kids for having their face in the screens, it's not there. Now when you mix dopamine with the other three feel-good hormones that we all are able to produce in our bodies, I'm so sorry about these two things, <laughs> they were fantastic on my mark. <laughs> you've got oxytocin, which is the love drug, which connects us to each other, you've got serotonin, which is that service to others that some of the other speakers have been talking about, and then endorphins that you get obviously you exercise. Um, now when you mix those three together, you've got a really powerful cocktail, and that's where the magic can start to happen. Except we live in a society that is completely shrouded in addiction, and it's everywhere. And every single one of us in this room, whether we recognise it or not, we're all addicts. I'm going to challenge you a little bit with this. And it all starts with the gateway drug. And the gateway drug is not marijuana, as we're all being told to believe. It's actually this wonderful stuff, sugar. And it's eight times more addictive than cocaine. Now, unless you were a breastfed baby, you would have been addicted to the white stuff before you could even walk. Because it's like today before me, and almost all processed foods. And this has been happening for quite a while now. What happens with the direction of our energy and the signals from our brain to our gut is it actually creates a signal failure. And very important chemicals such as ghrelin and leptin, they get interrupted and they tell you when you're hungry and when you're full and this impacts your energy levels massively throughout the day. Now this all came from two pieces of bad science out of Harvard in the 50s, which President Nixon, what a wonderful man he was, jumped onto, and the food industry in America. And they started to take fat out of our food and replace it with sugar, which is highly addictive and got everyone booked. And that's why you've got 40%, last time I checked, of adults in America who were obese. We're catching up now. 20% of children, isn't that heartbreaking? And yeah. that leads to all kinds of problems. And this fat myth, you know, that fat is bad for us, it's not. Our brain is a fatty organ. You know, we need fat to survive and to keep it functioning. You add sugar into the mix and that's where your brain fog comes from. So, the problem is, is that we relate a lot of these addictions to our identity and this is where the problems lie. Our, identi our identity is essentially our internal compass and that is what directs our energy and attention each and every day. And this internal compass is built up from our mental matrix, our blueprint in our minds, which is developed from the minute that we're born, basically. We're all born with a blank slate, and then all of our values, our beliefs, our experiences, our memories, this all goes to make up how we see the world, our relationship with each other, and 
our relationship with ourselves, which is the most important relationship we've ever had. So the beliefs that we have in our minds are created in one of two ways. I'm so sorry for these slides. <laughs> They're made up internally through experimentation, experiences, and then the memories that we have from all these experiences. But then also externally, this is where the problems lie. Because once we trust a person or a brand or a politician, you know, the authority figures in our lives or the experts, then we will believe anything they say. The worship element used to be religion, but now actually celebrities and Instagram influencers fall into this category. And this creates an emotional set point. No matter what you put into your body, you'll keep coming back to your emotional set point every single day. And then we get blocked because we get stuck in denial and we say, well, everyone's living this kind of lifestyle. Everyone drinks on a weekend or, you know, eat sugary stuff or kind of crispy cream after my dinner. The fact of the matter is that unless we are willing to accept that there's a few things in our lives that we probably need to change to be as healthy as we can, we're not going to make those changes. And that creates conflict. And whilst we might see conflict as something that happens externally in our relationships, it actually starts within because 80% of our human experience happens within our internal world of thoughts and feelings. And if that's an internal conflict, then that is going to project and manifest our words. So we have all of these things that we're interested in. Again, I'm sorry for the slide. <laughs> but this actually draws our attention away and we start to become disempowered because everyone is bothered about what's going on on the global platform at the minute. Things like global warming, the Ukraine situation, cost of living crisis, except we can't control any of these things. And in fact, there's another fantastic slide here for you. There's only ever three things that we can control in any situation. If we begin to shift our direction back onto those three things, we can start to make some really powerful changes in our lives. Our thoughts, our words, and our actions are the only three things that we can ever change. Except when you consider that the average human has 6,000 thoughts every day, it's like, whoa, where do I begin? Begin with your needs. Because every single human, every one of us in this room, we've all got the same basic fundamental needs. And when we start to understand what these needs are, we can start to really change the direction, the trajectory of our, trajectory of our lives. So Maslow's hierarchy of needs is a standard five-level model, but actually it's the six-level model that I'm most interested in because it's what some of the other speakers have talked about today. The sixth level that everyone seems to miss out is service to others, and it's why all of the people that I serve in the social care sector go into those roles that are highly underpaid, completely lacking in recognition for the wonderful work they're doing, demonised by the mainstream media. Because they start to reach their full potential, you know, and they found their purpose, these people, and it really breaks my heart that we're in such a difficult time at the Because when we start to fulfil the base level needs, we can start to not just survive, but we can start to thrive. Now, the reason I'm here today is because, as Richie mentioned, I've got a case study that's been funded by Innovate UK. They've invested and they've believed in me, which is what Sharon was talking about at the beginning. And it's a two-pronged approach to this, this case study. The first is working on those practical action steps that are often really difficult to change. And I'm doing this through a four-week self-directed course, 10, 15 minutes of learning a day, because your brain can't take in any more information than that. It starts with the foundations of what you need to make change in your life. It helps to develop an intrinsic motivation, which is also necessary to make long-lasting permanent change. And it talks about habits. And then it's three weeks of practical kind of information about the sleep cycle, creating a morning routine that is going to help to direct your energy in the right direction each and every day. The evening routine is probably the most difficult to overcome. It's all about letting go. Detox is not about a juice cleanse. It's all about emotional detox and mental detox. The game-changing part is the software that's being developed at the moment. The is also a new and older. Right. It's all about shifting all of this automated behaviour in the right-hand side of our brain. Developing a value-based mindset rather than a belief-based mindset that is what we think really going to shift things. And this piece of software, I'm not kidding you, I've been using it for 11 years and it's powerful. If I'd stood up here 11 years ago, you would have seen a very different person. So anyone who wants to get involved and want to start to shift the limitations of themselves personally or the organisations that they work for, please do get in touch. Like I said, this is being funded by Innovate UK, my research partner is with you. It's completely free of charge for anyone to get involved with, and it starts in January. Um, please ask me any questions at the end of the chat from anywhere. Get involved. Thank you so Fantastic. much for your time. Fantastic.